Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here, and welcome back to a special episode of Gwent Edge. Gwent is full of amazing artwork, and I wanted to make a video that highlights this a little. The artists working on this game earn all the praise they get for their vibrant and gorgeous set pieces contained in every single card. In today's video, we will be looking closely at a few of those cards, and look at 5 things you might have missed in Gwent cards. Some of these will be familiar to some of you, but I hope you discover a few new things about the art within these beautiful cards because of this video. Let's dive in. Let's start with a no-brainer. With the release of Iron Judgment, Gwent updated the loading screens, highlighting three cards every time that fit together into one breathtaking diorama. Some of these so-called triptychs actually bring back cards that disappeared during the transition from the beta to homecoming. The poor fucking infantry for example, or PFI, now only has its middle card still in the game, but was originally part of a larger group. Same thing goes for the Blue Strap Commandos, a card which is basically the cornerstone of Gwent, originating from the original minigame in The Witcher 3. The Temerian Infantry, the Queen's Guard, the Drum and Shield Maidens, the Sirens, all of them lost two thirds of their group and with them their amazing artwork. Even Lamias, which is now just a special card Hideous Feast, was originally a three-parter. Some trios from the beta never even returned after homecoming, such as the dragon-slaying Krinfrid Reavers, although I have a feeling we'll see those back sooner rather than later. The Reaven used to be a triple panel card for the Neckers with completely unique artwork that was never used in-game. This take on the Neckers was a lot darker compared to its current card, so that was probably why it was cut. There are still a lot of trios in the game however, mostly focusing on unique characters on each part of the separate cards. Lambert, Vesemir and Eskel form the Care Morhen Witchers together, Whispers, Brewers and Weavers are making a lovely stew together as the Crones trio, and Iron Judgment added a few new trios as well. The Nilfgaardian Knights Ramon Tyrconel, Afan Hillergrand and Fionn Var Garnell are happily murdering dwarves together, while Zoltan, Munro Bros and Figgis Merluzo are standing in strong contrast slaughtering Nilfgaardians. Both these panels just come to life when put together and that's what makes them so awesome. More of them please. The Phoenix has been in Gwent since the beginning of the beta. It even featured heavily in one of beta Gwent's story events, the Midwinter Hunt, where Geralt was tasked with killing one of these majestic creatures. But can you even kill a Phoenix permanently? Whenever it dies, a new Phoenix rises from the ashes and its ability in Gwent showcases this as well. It can resurrect each round using the ashes it leaves behind, but did you know that its artwork even shows this beforehand as well? If you look closely at the design of the Phoenix, you'll discover a hatchling Phoenix already in its chest. You might overlook it at first since the Phoenix itself takes all the attention, but it's there, waiting to burst out once its parent dies. Who's a good little Phoenix? Ciri is an important character and this is reflected in her prevalence across Gwent. You have her basic Ciri card, Ciri Dash and Ciri Nova, each showcasing a different one of her abilities. She is also shown on her horse Kelpie in the artwork of the Imperial Diviner, where the latter tries to locate her for the Emperor. The most hidden version of Ciri however is located on Johnny's card. Johnny is a goldling and if you've played The Witcher 3 you know that he's a bit of a foul-mouthed creature. Geralt found out that Johnny might have some information on Ciri's whereabouts, but since Johnny lost his voice, he can't tell Geralt anything, so the Witcher helps him get it back. Upon retrieval of his voice, Johnny immediately displays his eloquence by spouting out a lot of nonsense, followed up by a dump of exposition. We never quite get to see Johnny's side of the events, but he colorfully explains to us that he was in the process of, and I quote, defecating to the sunrise, downright glorious when he spotted Ciri running through the woods, which brings us back to his cart. Where the Witcher tree was a bit shy of showing us a childlike creature shitting, Gwent does not have any of these qualms, showing us Johnny in the process of emptying his bowels in colorful detail. Hidden in the background however, you can also see that Johnny was in fact speaking the truth, because there she is, Ciri running through the forest, trying to get away from the crones of Crookback Bog. Another great example of visual storytelling. Shoop! Who doesn't love our adorable rock troll? He's basically the de facto mascot for Gwent and he has his very own card as well. A very strong Swiss army knife that can transform to suit your every need, if you're lucky, Shoop is a force to be reckoned with. But did you ever take a closer look at his artwork? 
While it's obvious that Shoop is painting his very own Gwenti cards, surrounded by card scraps, meteorite powder and a freaking milling machine, you might have missed his companions. There are several northern cardinal birds hanging around, and those birds are the very same as the one that is used in CD Projekt Red's logo. CDPR uses these in various games as little easter eggs, which is a nice touch on its own. In the background, however, we also have a necker that is peeking out from behind one of Shoop's barrels. Why is this important, you say? Well, when Shoop goes on an adventure, he takes his companions with him. Both the Hunter, Mage and Knight Shoop cards also feature the same Northern Cardinal and Necker. In the Hunter card, the Cardinal is on Shoop's back and the Necker is hiding underneath some branches at the bottom. In the Mage card, both companions are tumbling around in a magical vortex created by Shoop. And in the Knight card, the Necker is actually riding Shoop while he's chasing away a couple of Cardinals. This consistency is something you might not notice at first glance, but it's really cool once you do. Our last one for today is for the real Witcher 3 fans. Ever wondered why the prize winning cow card can transform into a court? A simple one power bovine unit does not seem to have a connection to a bloodthirsty monster that's capable of toppling a small house by running into it, or does it? It's actually an homage to an update to the Witcher 3 designed to fix a specific exploit. See. Players were farming the cows just outside of White Orchard, the tutorial area of the game, killing them over and over to gain levels and money early on and giving them an advantage when facing the rest of the game. Nothing problematic in a single player game aside from the horrors of the senseless slaughter of innocent cattle, but the devs at CD Projekt Red decided to have a little fun with the exploit. Instead of fixing it by for example reducing the respawn rate of the cows or nerfing the drops, they decided to spawn an overpowered court bursting through the fence to make quick work of that white-haired witcher who was gathering stakes for half an hour. This event was further immortalized in Gwent, as you can see the pile of dead cows on the prize-winning cow cart before it transforms into a court ready to eat your face all. <coughs> Protector of cows, a real hero of the common people, until he starts eating them as well. And that's the last one for today, I have a lot more of these waiting for their time in the spotlight, but I wanted to see what you guys think of this video first. Let me know in the comment section down below which facts you learned today, and if you have any other secrets in Gwent that you want me to share with everyone, don't hesitate to let me know as well. As I said, there's more where this came from, so look out for that next video and drop me a like if you enjoyed watching this one. Thanks enormously for watching and for any support, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!